Greetings to our viewing audience and welcome to a special edition of Meek Productions National Black LGBT Subsidiary for the Atlanta Chapter, History of Black Gay Atlanta, where we're celebrating five years of you knowing your history and knowing your heritage. Of course, this is Miko Evans, our CEO of Meek Productions, the parent company. It is with great pleasure for us to introduce our new first lady, of history of Black Gay Atlanta. She uh, made history with our company uh, recently, and I know uh, we casted her last year for a play, No Time for the Pain, and uh, she was one of the uh, supporting characters in that uh, particular production. Angela Hutchins, girl, how are you doing? I am fabulous. <laughs> We're glad to be Yes, here. baby. We're so glad to have you on board with us. We're so glad that you made history with us I'm as excited. our very first lady oh, wow. of the Atlanta chapter, which is where History of Black Gay America actually mm -hmm. officially started so many uh, five years ago. Um, tell us a little bit. So we, we, we just want to just get right into it. Uh, before we do that, want to give a shout out once again to our new advertising um, uh, partners, actually, uh, Suja Juice and the Space Shop Self Storage. Their information should be located at the bottom of this screen and you will also see commercials for them throughout our online TV shows and syndicated radio shows. Get back to you though, darling. <laughs> I remember when we had that first meeting after the play was over uh, and we had your welcome orientation into Meek Productions and then when I thought about it, I said, yeah, we need to do more outreach as far as our lesbian and bisexual women. And then when I called you into that meeting, I had an epiphany. I said, are you born and raised in Atlanta? She said, well, no, but I've been in Atlanta 30 years. I <laughs> fell out my chair, y'all. I said, say what? And then when she told me the year she moved to Atlanta, I said, oh, so you was here during the same time when I, okay, when everything kind of got kicked off in the golden era of Atlanta's black LGBT movement. I said, oh, it's on. <laughs> Because I didn't think about this five years ago. Yes. And I'm like, wow, this is yes. so beautiful. Yes. Tell yes. us about when you first moved here to Atlanta. Well, um, hmm, when I first moved here to Atlanta, mm -hmm. my mom moved us here when, um, uh, what's his name? You're talking about during the time of Wayne, uh, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne Williams and Atlanta when child Wayne murders. Wayne Williams was when the, when the child murders was going on. Mm -hmm. I was like, Mom, really? You moved us here? We were, <laughs> we were young. We were like 15, May 14. Yeah, y'all were teenagers then. You were teenagers then. Wow. Was little. Um, but that's when I moved here. Um, well, my mom divorced my dad. Uh -huh. My mom's originally from um, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Oh, and so she's a southern yeah, girl so anyway. She's a southern girl anyway. Uh -huh. So, we, you know, we come back and forth. So she decided to come be closer to her mom. Uh -huh. So we moved to Georgia because it's like 13 of them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> your family, yeah. Your, family, yeah. Your, your mom family. and uh, uncles and right. aunts. Yeah. Right. They all over the place. Yeah. So my, my, my mom had her favorite sister here. Uh -huh. So we went ahead and moved here. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, now, I guess I've been here about 30 years, but I've been gay for 25. Wow. How was, um, since you come back during that time, because I know um, you, uh, I'm class of 89 and you class of 87, yeah. right? And so, uh, yeah, so we come right, right in the same age bracket. So tell us about your experience as a black lesbian woman, how it was for you in the Confederate South coming out. When did you decide to come out? Woo, wow. Um... <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I um I've always known that I was attracted to him, even when I was in New York. Mm -hmm. Men would come up to me, and I just for some reason I wasn't attracted to him, mm -hmm. and I knew something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. But when I came to Georgia, um, I didn't date. I didn't date too much. I met my son's father, mm -hmm. and um, I stayed with him mm -hmm. about. About a good seven, eight years, maybe. Mm -hmm. I was with him for a long time. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like in your I early started, I, yeah. No, I started. No, I started dating him when I was in junior high school. Oh, wow. You know, okay. My junior high school, my high school. Uh huh. Everything. Oh, okay. Got gotcha. My first son, had my first son and everything. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. But um, after that, you know, it was, you know, I kind of knew I liked the women. I knew I was uh, attracted to women. And, and, you know, back in the day, nobody talked about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know that they had lesbian. Um, clubs back then. Yeah, uh -huh. I, have, I have a sister, a baby sister. Uh -huh. um, she started dancing at uh, Club Nikki's. Oh, that's, how, that's, that's how old school. That's, how, <laughs> that's, that's, that's old, old school. She was dancing. Club Nikki's? What? On Bankhead Highway. Okay. <laughs> on Bankhead Highway on um, 
Avenue. 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 Why she was dancing. Dancing, wow. So that kind of gave me the opportunity. So I was like, sis, you know, let me know when you go to your next, next club. club. So I can kind of get in where I fit in. Yeah, she took me to the club. And I saw all these women. I'm and like, went crazy. Because, you know, you also you just, so you used to go into the straight club and all you see is the guys. Uh -huh. You know, it's the guys. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. everybody well, trying to holler at you. You be like, mm-hmm, hey, how you doing? To the Mark <laughs> oh, you Tell, tell us about your first experience with the I with was, the sleazy and queens. I right, the sleazy queens. Okay, for those that don't know their history, of course, I the Marquette is Atlanta's very first black gay nightclub. Yes, going all the way back to the late sixties. <laughs> so um, I went to to Marquette with my sister, and mm -hmm. I was just amazed because I ain't seen nothing but women. Mm -hmm. And I and my sister my sister was very. Um, uh, very uh, close to me. She wouldn't let nobody. She wouldn't let nobody talk. To me. <laughs> All the women was trying to talk to me. My sister was like, "She's straight. She's straight. Don't talk to her. She's straight. She's straight. Don't." She wasn't ready for nobody talking. Uh -huh. And she wasn't ready for me to get out. There. Yeah. Uh -huh. But um, my first. I mean, it was. It was. It was wonderful. Yeah. Because I saw these pretty women. Yeah. I said, where all these women come from? And so you remember the old Marquette that was on the, the corner. The old Marquette. That was on the corner. Yes. What used to be Aspen Street and MLK. Yes. The three level. Yes. <laughs> I just love it, y'all. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and Marquette used to be every Friday and Saturday nights we used to go. Every, every Friday and Saturday nights. Every Friday and Saturday nights. Yes. Yes. What, 7 in the morning? Said it's 6 in the morning. 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, yeah. Yeah, work at 8. Be before, I uh, <laughs> want to give a shout out to Poison Ivy Entertainment, before there ever was what they call an after hours thing, yeah. Right. That was the norm for us back then, okay? So, you know, then I started going to Marquette, Loretta. Remember Lolo's, yeah. Lolo's. Oh, my God. It, I mean... It was when I first came out. That's when I realized that there was women mm -hmm. all over the place, mm -hmm. and I could just go and pick me women. Okay. <laughs> but I was very, very, very excited because I was like, okay, how do you come out? Yeah. I, I didn't know how to come out. Mm -hmm. um, but I, when my sister told me there was clubs, mm -hmm. I started going to all the little clubs and stuff like that. Then you know, it just it went from there. It just went and, from and there. Twenty-five years later. Okay. Hey. Still. Lesbian and all. Okay. <laughs> We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, when we come back, we have more with our first lady of history of Black Gay Atlanta. You're going to start seeing her out more in all events relating to all things Black and Gay in the ATL. Please stay tuned. Remember to know your history and know your heritage. We'll be right back after this break. You're tuned in to Meek Productions Presents History of Black Gay Atlanta. Please stay tuned. We do have more in store. You want to win a gold medal in Berlin? Sure. Even under the Hitler regime? Our damn thing no black and white. It's only fast and slow. For those 10 seconds, you are completely free. Race. Rated PG-13. with the last half of our new winter episode of History of Black Gay Atlanta, where we encourage you to know your history and know your heritage. We're still here with our first lady, Angela Hutchins. Girl, we, you took me back. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, I'm old. Did you see all that Atlanta black and gay history that we just went over? And I know it was mostly nightlife, but man, a lot of the stuff started with the nightlife. That's right. You know, because we wasn't uh, right. you know always accepted into churches no. and stuff like that. That's why we had to start our own movements back right. then. So. Um, I, was you took kinda, back. I was kind of still, you know, still, I wasn't out, out. Mm -hmm. you know, I was still, you know, behind the scenes. You yeah. Know, I would go to work, nobody would know. You yes. Know? You know, it took me a minute for me to really come out. Yeah, you know, I know, because, yeah. Because of back then, it was, what, 25 years ago. I know, yeah. So, but now, everybody's out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time to be who you are. Right, right. Uh, let's talk about your first experience in... Uh, more like community advocacy because I know yours started with the church right. and you've been a member of the legendary Tabernacle yes. Baptist Church and uh, where the awesome Pastor Dennis Meredith is a uh, yes. pastor of that and uh, awesomeness, awesomeness. Yes. and I remember him uh, I first met him at the Gospel Music Workshop of America back in 1994 that was before he became the official pastor of Tabernacle, yeah, like you said, in 98. Yeah, he became the official pastor in 98. 98, and so you was a member of that church. Yeah, I started since... in 2000. I've been a member. Oh, uh, in 2000. Yeah, I've been a member. Which means they were still on years. They were still on Boulevard. Still on Boulevard. <laughs> yes, yes. They were still on Boulevard, man. Yes. So, yeah, so so your, your introduction to LGBT community advocacy started right. little by little, right. just by being with Tabernacle, because right. this was kind of before he officially came out, too. Right. So, uh, yeah, tell us about more about your experience and even being in that environment, you know, uh, and seeing the growth from where it started back then oh, wow. under Pastor uh, Meredith's leadership to now. Oh, wow. Um, well, you know, being in the church um, where... Been, that was you know, Baptist movement too, yeah, okay. Where it was very diversified. It was, you know, straight people, gay people, uh -huh. you know, at, at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and then Pastor, you know, decided to come on out. Mm -hmm. And when he came on out, he lost a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he still had his people there. Mm -hmm. I was still there. Mm -hmm. um, but he had his people there and he's growing his people back. And we started doing um, the uh, clothes drive. Mm -hmm. We would just take it to the homeless, mm -hmm. and I also would do a lot of um, AIDS walks. I still do AIDS walk. One one year I did AIDS walk in my heels. Oh no, you I did. did! I did. No, you did, girl. I did, <laughs> I did the AIDS walk, three mile AIDS walk. For wow! Walk. In yes. your heels, yes. girl. <laughs> I know she had to soak them bones. <laughs> Yeah, when I got home. Uh, she had to soak them bones when she got home. When was your, your first AIDS walk was when? Uh, I'd say maybe 2007. Wow. Seven, yeah. Seven. Wow. And, and I've been doing it ever since. Ever since. Wow. Yes. And um, also, I would go to the um, parades. Parades, uh huh. Um, um, also, would do, you know, uh, clothes raise, fundraise. We did a lot of fundraising for mm -hmm. the church as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I just did some things where it was more with the women, mm -hmm. the lesbian community, than, got you. than with, yeah. with the boys. Yeah, uh huh, got so, you. Wow. <clears throat> uh, since you've been in Atlanta for as long as you've been, uh, what do you think about how things have progressed? Uh, have you think uh, things have gotten more for the better or for the worse? Well, or or have, is it like a combination of both? Well, I think it's definitely has gotten got better. Mm -hmm. oh, a whole mm -hmm. lot better. You yes. know, like I said, back in the day, nobody was talking to you. You don't know who was out. Uh -huh. Right now that everybody is being known, everybody's starting to come out, especially the celebrities. Mm -hmm. starting to come out. You know, mm -hmm. more celebrities come out, the more people, other people come out. Everybody that's coming out now is coming out. Mm -hmm. And right now, everybody is kind of like out. It's mm -hmm. 2016, everybody is just out. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like I said, it was, it, you know, you know, back in the day, you know, nobody talked about it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, but uh, now, we're talking about it. We're talking about it. We're more out more. More out more. And, um, more visible. Right, very more visible. More visible. Uh, it's less challenging. The challenges are still there, yeah. but it's less definitely, challenges definitely, now. Definitely challenging. Mm-hmm, right. less challenges now and stuff. What can people expect from you as our first lady? Well, you're gonna see my face more, and I'm definitely going to bring in more of our lesbian and bisexual women to come out more. Mm-hmm. Um, for some reason, you know, lesbian women do not, do not, they like to come out, but they have to have a place to come out to. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring them out more, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, let's, let's do a little more fundraising. Let's do some, um, some outings. Because mm -hmm. back in the day, we used to go to uh, uh, 
Red Top Mountain. Oh, Red Top Mountain. I knew we were going to say that. <laughs> Red Top Mountain, baby, was the bomb. Every holiday, everybody was at Red Top Mountain. That was every Memorial Day yes. holiday. Sure was. Yes. Memorial Day That's holiday. For a long time. Uh huh. Because I know the time. men's had their place and then the women's had theirs. Yeah. And it's like, and what I liked about it back then is that whatever the men had, the women would come. Right. Whatever the women had, we would come. Right. Then we all to, supported then each then other. It got to the point where it was just all of us. Yeah, so, just all of us. Yes. So, you know, let's bring, you know, let's just bring out a little bit more of, uh -huh. of, of, of that. Yeah. You know, getting, getting everybody out. Yeah. You know, because the women love, we love to come out. Yeah. We mm -hmm. just don't like to go to the club, you know. Like all the time. Older ladies and yes. Like to the club mm -hmm. We don't did that, done that. <laughs> You know, we want to meet and greet. Yeah. You, know, we want, you know, when we go out, I want to call uh, a couple of them and say, let's go here, let's go there. You know, let's, let's, let's mix, mix and mingle more mm -hmm. um, coming up in the um, future. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. This is going to be exciting, you all. Uh, she, this lady has made history <laughs> with our division. And uh, so you're going to see her more out uh, when we have uh, media coverage to do. She'll possibly be the main face you will see. Uh, when we have events, because uh, there will be events that will be up under the uh, History of Black Gay Atlanta and History of Black Gay America brand. And so for Atlanta, she's going to be the main host. So uh, it's going to be on, y'all, this year, 2016. Work, yeah, we getting guys. ready to come for your behind. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> but, uh, baby, thank you so much uh, for uh, being on board with us, for your contribution, and uh, for being even more excited than we are. I'm excited. <laughs> Stay tuned. Being the first lady is a good that's a lot of responsibility. That doesn't, that doesn't come around. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. This is going to be so exciting. So for more information about what's in store for 2016 under this brand and with our first lady, please visit the main website, which is blackgayusa.meekproductions.com. That information should be located at the bottom of the screen. And also you can visit the official group of uh, the Atlanta chapter, which is, of course, History of Black Gay Atlanta. Just look in the search box on Facebook and you will find us. Until our next episode, remember to know your history and know your heritage. We look forward to seeing you.